Catherine Norton. Who are you? I am Irrigation. Irrigation? What are you doing here? I have come to inform you. Huh? You do not value water and all its uses in your life. You must be instructed. What's that stuff all over you? Oh, you know, it's plants and bugs and water life, a little this and that. You're dripping all over the carpet. I'll get in trouble. Never mind that. You will be visited by three spirits tonight. The spirits of the Snake River Basin, past, present, and future. I've got school tomorrow. This is educational. Why do I have to learn about irrigation tonight? Because you don't appreciate it. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, yes I do. You don't even appreciate that glass of water next to your bed. Yes, I do. Without water, this whole area would be barren desert land. I'll drink the water. And you didn't eat your potatoes at dinner tonight, did you? Well, I didn't... Without irrigation, the waters could not flow from the rivers to the farmland to grow the food you eat. Irrigation transforms almost three million acres of Snake River Basin from desert to garden. Without irrigation, the community where you live might not have sprang into existence at all. Henry, who are you talking to? Oh, boy, it's irrigation, Mom. You will be visited by three spirits tonight. They will explain the value of potatoes and water and all the other products of the Snake River Basin. <laughs> Jump in and say. My name's not Dan. Who are you? Who do you think? Spirit of Snake for past, right? Uh-huh. And you're the young'un who doesn't know everything irrigation's done for me. I'm Jeffrey. Uh-huh, well, Jeffrey. Well, take a look around, Jeffrey. Sagebrush and desert, as far as the eye can see. This here land is you dry. You talk funny. Pay attention, son. Now, the Monty Snake River winds a thousand miles from Wyoming through Idaho and up to the Columbia River. The Native Americans were the first folks to move along that river, living near its waters and enjoying its bounty. Then came the pioneers. The settlers of the early West knew they had plenty of sunshine, fertile soil, and water in the river. The question was how to get that water to the fields for the crops and where to store it so they could use it once they needed it. Couldn't they just call some water guy? <laughs> Irrigation was the answer. I thought it might be. People moved to where the water was available. They started out forming canal companies, and they cooperated with each other to build canals and small dams. The Idaho Falls area had the first canal company in the late 1800s, and later, the folks in Twin Falls in 1905. I don't have to remember dates, do I? Because those early settlers worked together, they were successful in getting water to their homes and farms. But it still wasn't enough water for the people and places that needed it. You see, in order to survive, they had to adapt to what Mother Nature had to offer. There's plenty of water in the spring when the winter snows melt in the mountains, but it was just rushing down the river and off to the ocean. They needed reservoirs to corral that water, to hold it for when they needed it during the dry summer months. Then, in 1902, Congress passed the Reclamation Act that provided funding to build irrigation projects out west. How do you do that? Yes, sir. For almost 100 years now, the Bureau of Reclamation has been building dams and reservoirs right here in Idaho. Cool. Yeah, it is cool. Because then the farmers started forming irrigation districts to help pay for all those canals and pipelines and dams that they'd be benefiting from. And that's when irrigation and farming really took off in the Snake River Basin. Wherever water became available, communities just sprang up all around. Bip, bam, boom. The crops and the livestock flourished and Idaho grew. So, what did they grow? Well, farmers learned what grew best in the soil here. Beans, hay, grain, potatoes, and they found good grazing land for their cattle and sheep. Mm, man, oh man, those were the days. 
meat and potatoes. Like this here supper I got us fish. Fried taters and ground beef. Looks like a happy meal. Well, it makes me happy. Go on, try some. Mmm. So when irrigation guess came along, did people have enough water after that? Well, you know, partner, <laughs> folks still struggle to get all the water they want to do everything they want to do with it. And to get the water to go where they want it and not to go where they don't want it. But the other spirits will tell you about that. The point is, year after year, irrigation has made all the difference for Idaho farmers. And that makes for a happy heap of beef and potatoes. Take some of that myself. Uh, well, that's good. Come on, kid, let's go. Time's a wasting. Don't you guys ever knock? The Snake River never knocks for nobody. So I suppose you're the president. That's right, and I got a lot to show you. You see, Jeffrey, the Snake River Basin is where most of Idaho's agriculture happens. And irrigated agriculture has become the foundation of the basin's economy. What does that mean? Oh, well, maybe this is something you can relate to. See? A typical American meat. Yeah. You got your meat, your potatoes, your dairy, and a small prize. Well, eh, <laughs> never mind the small prize. This is what Idaho agriculture is all about. Growing and processing food is the number one industry in this state, and all thanks to irrigation. Irrigation, right. Okay, so if we grow all this food, what do we grow? Oh, boy, howdy. Well, over 200 crops. Some we use every day. See if you can guess one. French fries. I mean, potatoes. Everyone knows that. That's right. Idaho is the number one producer of potatoes in the United States. We grow almost a third of this country's potatoes. But we're also number one in the production of small white beans, pink beans, and small red beans, and Austrian winter peas. And number one in production of food-sized trout. How about that? And Idaho is one of America's top ten producers of pinto beans, navy beans, garbanzo beans, great northern beans, black turtle soup beans, plus your wrinkled dried peas, dried peas and lentils. You got your spearmint, peppermint, spring wheat, winter wheat, barley, hops, alfalfa, hay, onions, sugar beets, prunes, plums, sweet cherries and apples. That's a lot. Not to mention your sheep, lambs, wool, milk cows, milk production, American cheese, and honey. Wow. Well, those are just the products where Idaho ranks in the top ten. There's more. No, no, that's okay. I, I believe you. Agriculture in Idaho produces over three billion dollars a year. Oh, sorry, no free samples of that. So irrigation does all this? Oh, yeah. But times have changed for irrigators and for the Bureau of Reclamation. You see, before, dams and reservoirs would keep going in, and the distribution systems would carry the water to the lands that needed it, and the irrigation companies would handle the maintenance. But the Bureau of Reclamation can't keep on building dams and reservoirs. Now they got to focus on getting the most out of what we already have available. Huh? Making the most out of the water we already have. That's where technology comes in. With the new advances in irrigation, water delivery can be adjusted by remote control. Farmers can be more accurate in deciding how much water their crops need, and irrigation districts can be more exact in how much water to deliver. That way, it's not wasted. And now they're improving dams we already have by putting in emergency warning systems and making regular safety inspections. Now, take the Minidoka Dam. It was old. The first dam built in the Northwest, finished in 1906. The Bureau of Reclamation built a new power plant that'll generate a lot more electricity for cities, industries, and irrigation. They didn't build a whole new dam, they just made this one more efficient. Well, what do we need dams for anyway? Oh, lots of things. Dams generate power for electricity, and you won't get very far without electricity these days. They store water for later use, so the farmers can irrigate their land during the dry months I don't think you were paying attention earlier. Sure I was. Dams provide a way to control flooding. Water can be held back and released slowly during the spring 
So the winter snow's melting in the mountains don't rush downstream all at once. Dams and reservoirs make a good place for recreation. Swimming, boating, picnicking, fishing, water skiing make a good place for wildlife, too. Look, if we're going to keep going outside, I got to change my clothes. Oh, <laughs> I see what you mean. OK, why don't we just build more dams? Well, uh, things are more complicated now. We've got to balance the need of all the water users, not just irrigators. You've got a lot of different interests competing for a limited supply of water. And building more dams isn't always the answer. Balance is the name of the game, Jeffrey. But you'll find out more about that pretty soon. Anywho, if today's agriculture folks want to keep those happy meals coming, they'll have to learn to deal with those challenges. But you'll see. And we do have modern technology to help us out. guys, past and present. Young man, never keep the future waiting. Hey, Al, what Come are you on. doing? You remind me of somebody. Oh, never mind that. We've got lots of ground to cover. Miss Mills? Yeah, my teacher from school. Wow, who's that? She looks really ticked off. That's Mother Nature. And you're quite right about her disposition. You really don't want to mess with Mother Nature. <laughs> you mean someone did? Lots of someones. You see, the Snake River Basin has gone through some great changes in the last hundred years, and not all of them were good for the fish or wildlife. So that's why she's upset. Yes. And you know, perhaps we should leave her alone while she's thinking. So what are you going to do about it? <laughs> what am I going to do about it? <laughs> oh, no. What are you going to do about it? Uh, I don't know. The first step I always say is enlightenment. What? Education, Jeffrey, education. You see, when people first started to move here and build dams to irrigate their crops or raise their livestock, they didn't think about the pollutants they might be putting back into the river. They didn't think about replacing the groundwater that they were pumping out with their wells. They didn't think about the consequences to the fish and the wildlife. Sounds like they did a lot of things without thinking. Mom says I do that. Really? Anyway, since the dams were built, the salmon population has dwindled. Salmon need to migrate back and forth to the ocean and some of the dams complicate that considerably. No, people weren't thinking about those things, and now they're thinking a lot. And that will be the challenge for you. As more and more people want to use the water for different purposes, they're going to have to find a balance. Balance? That's what the other guy was talking about. All life is connected. What we do to the environment, we do to ourselves. There's an old Indian proverb, the frog does not drink up the pond in which he lives be a pretty stupid frog. Enlightenment, Jeffrey. It's a wonderful thing. So is balance something we all have in the future? We're working on it. But there's a lot to balance. To manage water wisely, we have to take in consideration all the needs of the users. And that includes irrigation for the land, food production, flood control for protection, power generation for electricity, water for recreation, fisheries and wildlife needs, Water for industries, cities, and homes, like yours. So what's going to happen to irrigation? Worried about your Happy Meal. Maybe. Irrigators will continue to work for improvements through technology and cooperation. They've already found ways to water more efficiently through sprinkler irrigation. They're helping construct wetlands, which filter and purify the water and provide homes for wildlife. That makes Mother Nature happy. Maybe someone should give her a Happy Meal. No, but they are injecting water back into the aquifer. That's the water table under the ground. And working to improve water quality. One way is by keeping livestock out of the streams. They want to help revive the fish population in our waters. They're finding ways to feed more people by using their resources wisely. Sounds like we got it all figured out. Well, no. As the population of the state grows, so do the challenges. As the demand for water goes up, those needs must be dealt with. Cities and industries need more and more water. Farmland is being taken up by housing developments and plenty of other unfinished business. I'm hungry. OK, but don't forget what you learned about irrigation. Without it, the Snake River Basin would still be a desert. Most of the people wouldn't live here. We wouldn't have any reservoirs to enjoy. Electricity would be a lot more expensive. And 
Where would we get our food? <laughs> Jeffrey, where did you get that? From irrigation, Mom, and the Snake River Basin. Oh, uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> 